The Joy-Con are a great solution for versatility, but one of the compromises for that versatility is an awful directional pad. There are mods available if you want to create a headache for yourself, but now for just 25 bucks, Hori makes a beautiful Joy-Con replacement with a D-pad already built in. It also has a lot of caveats. So I saw this at the checkout counter at Target about a week ago. I tweeted out a picture of it and said, I didn't know this was out already. And everybody and their mother replied that it's not. So now I'm making this video. Apparently Amazon has this listed as releasing October 2nd. So if you want one right now, check your local Target. Otherwise, if you're watching this after October 2nd, then use the Amazon link in the description because Papa needs some health insurance. Right off the bat, this is a gorgeous Joy-Con. I mean controller, it's not a Joy-Con. Nowhere on the box does it say Joy-Con. It's got a translucent, smoky black shell so you can kind of see the innards. And the gold Zelda theme is a nice touch. I wish Nintendo made stuff like this themselves. Unfortunately, it doesn't go well with any current Joy-Con combinations, except maybe neon blue. Fortunately for me, I have modded gold Joy-Cons from my Famicom build. This combination is really, really cool. I love this look. The reason it's not called a Joy-Con is because that's trademarked by Nintendo, but also because it has no internal battery, no wireless functionality, no HD rumble, and no motion controls, nothing. It's made just for portable mode, which to my understanding is how most people play their Switches anyway. And for $25, you're getting what you pay for. I'll be honest, I typically don't play in portable mode. I prefer the bigger buttons of something like a Pro Controller or the 8-Bit Do Controller, but if I'm out and about away from a TV, tabletop mode just doesn't cut it for me, so this is a good solution. The D-pad feels solid for 2D games like The Messenger or the new Switch Online NES games. It's a little plasticky, but I noticed no immediate problems when playing with it. The whole controller is significantly lighter than a Joy-Con, probably because it's missing half the junk inside it and it's a cheaper plastic. I was amazed by how much the thumbstick felt like an actual Joy-Con's thumbstick. The shoulder buttons are slightly higher and slightly clickier than the Joy-Cons, which isn't a problem. The select and share buttons, though, are mushy rubber. These aren't very important buttons, so it's not a big deal. It's just a weird design choice. My biggest problem with the feel of this controller is where the D-pad is placed. I understand why it's there. It's easy to just put it in the place of Nintendo's directional buttons, but I would have preferred it to be swapped with the thumbstick because that's where my hand naturally falls. Instead, I gotta bend my thumb at a weird angle, and I don't like that. I don't wanna do that. I would have also been fine with just getting rid of the analog stick entirely. I'm only ever going to be using this controller when I'm playing a 2D game anyway, so I don't need that thumbstick. The Hori controller isn't a Joy-Con replacement. It's not like somebody could be using this Hori controller as a first player while a second player uses that unused left Joy-Con. Everybody who buys this Hori controller will have an unused left Joy-Con laying around while this is in use. And don't go throwing out that left Joy-Con because you're gonna want it eventually. Whenever I talk about this controller, people respond with, oh, you mean that battery sucking piece of shit? Like, dude, calm down. <laughs> well, of course it takes some battery away from the Switch because it needs to be powered after all, but apparently back in July, it was reported that it was sucking battery life even while the Switch was in sleep mode. Hori has since reported that the 6.0.0 firmware update has fixed this issue. I had it attached to my Switch for about 16 hours and my Switch's battery life dropped from 95% to 92%, which I think is a pretty reasonable drop in battery life and way different than the drains the battery in a few hours that was previously reported. It was also reported that this Hori controller fried somebody's dock and it's being misreported as frying that person's Switch. The whole thing is very confusing. After the Hori controller completely drained this dude's battery, he tried plugging it into his dock. It wouldn't charge or output to the TV. It's unclear if the issue is the Hori controller, his Switch, or his dock. I'm also kind of just assuming that he has the official Nintendo dock because it doesn't specify anywhere in his post, and that would explain a lot if he had a third-party dock. His Switch still works and charges in portable mode, and he has no other dock to test this with, so this seems like a very unique issue. 
There's absolutely no reason for you to leave this controller plugged into your Switch for long periods of time. The use case is so specific that you're best off just leaving the regular Joy-Con on your Switch and swapping it out when you want to play 2D games. The real question is, does this D-pad make this controller better than a Pro Controller or an 8-bit Do controller? Y'all know how much I love the SN30 Pro, but I know you guys mostly play primarily in portable mode, so how does this compare? One major complaint against the 8-bit Do controller is input lag. This isn't something that I've ever noticed, but I have started to worry a little bit about it. So I went a little bit above and beyond and did some tests. I recorded myself at 120 frames per second, pressing the down button to see how long it would take for the character to react on screen. Then I counted the frames in between. I did this with the Joy-Con attached, the Hori controller, the Pro controller, and the 8-bit Do controller. All tests were performed undocked. To my surprise, all of them had an identical reaction time except for the attached Joy-Con. It was one frame faster than the rest, which equates to less than a frame in actual gameplay time, because gameplay is 60 frames per second and I'm shooting at 120 frames per second. I think this difference is negligible. I think this is just due to the buttons being way smaller and having way less distance to travel. Also, it was very hard to gauge when the input was actually being pressed because the button barely moves when you press it. It's so tiny. I did this test undocked because a dock and a TV would introduce delay. And we're really just testing out the Hori controller here, which can't be docked anyway. What we learned here is that there's no difference and I completely wasted my time. Or you know what? Hey, on the bright side, we learned that there's no difference. So look, so there's that. The Hori D-pad controller is fantastic if you play a lot of 2D games in portable mode. If you play primarily in docked mode, then it isn't for you. And if you play mostly 3D games, then it isn't for you. It's a very specific use case. This isn't gonna make me start playing in portable mode. I still prefer big fat buttons and a big fat D-pad placed towards the top of a controller. But this is definitely going in my travel bag for sure. Again, it's only $25. I wouldn't worry about the technical issues people are talking about. I think they're a little blown out of proportion. This product is officially licensed by Nintendo. Maybe just uh, don't leave it plugged into your console for too long or turn the whole thing off and don't put it in sleep mode. You know, just, just in case. So what do you guys think about this Hori controller? Have you been looking for a good D-pad for your Switch? Is this something that you're even interested in? Or are you just gonna stick with the regular old Joy-Con? Leave it in the comments below. Add me on Twitter, any of this other social media garbage. As always, we got new videos and live streams all of the time. Our schedule is usually in a pinned tweet over on our Twitter. Hey, the backlog's back, did you see that? That means I have to change the schedule, uh-oh. This first episode of this season, we talked about Star Fox 64 and the Star Fox franchise really uh, in general. The Backlog is a series where we randomly pick a game that we own and talk about it regardless of whether or not we've played it. So it's gonna be a different game every week and sometimes it's gonna be a game that's not very interesting, but we're forced to talk about it. In the past, we've done games like Ocarina of Time and NCAA 2K3 for the Xbox. That one's actually one of my favorite episodes. Don't forget about twitch.tv slash WolfDan. We live stream over there. I'm starting to heart gold. And of course, the most important things that you could do is just to subscribe to this channel. It is free. And share this video with a friend, a friend who is always playing his Switch in portable mode out and about, because this might help him out a little bit. Thank you guys very much. You have yourself a very good